Welcome to the Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Scott Yerney. Don't forget to click the like button, share this information. If you're watching online, share it with a friend. YouTube, click that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a, a regular subscriber to all of our videos. Very impactful today video. Thanks for coming back on the Spotlight Series. Give us some updates on the fentanyl crisis in Rhode Island. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Give us a little background on uh, drug experience in your family for people who may not have seen a prior video with you. Uh, well, my son passed away from um, uh, a counterfeit pill that was laced with a deadly amount of, uh, of fentanyl in it. Uh, and um, I started this foundation because I was horrified at the lack of public awareness to parents and, uh, and to uh, school children, uh, et cetera, anywhere from... Uh, and, um, I found that DEA was the best source of information. Drug enforcement agency? Right. Drug enforcement, the United States Drug Enforcement Agency. agency. They've been very cooperative on letting us, uh, put our website on their, uh, on the science that they have. Uh, the science they have, uh, and the information they have is very accurate. Uh, it's very informative and we feel as though it saved lives. And that's the, that's the, uh, the, um, agency that we, that we follow. Okay, so we take a look at this. So you want to hold yours up? I'm going to take a look okay. at mine. Um, seven out of every ten pills with fentanyl contain potentially lethal dose. Correct. Um, so this is, you know, fentanyl is in a pill to make it stronger, more impact, more effects. Correct. Not just pills, a lot of other drugs as well. Right. Uh, but one of the things that caught my eye that you pointed out is at the bottom of this, it shows the authentic pill and the fake pill, where they're almost indistinguishable. And, and on purpose of, quite honestly, when we look at one of them, the authentic pill looks a little cheaper. Like the 30 isn't cut quite right and it's not rigid lines, but the fake one looks fantastic. Right, right. So it even looks more genuine than genuine, which is scary in itself. Right. So in some cases, I assume someone's buying what they think is discounted legitimate or they think it's legitimate, but right. and they may not have health coverage or it's a little less expensive. Um, and, and this is to where your son was kind of captured into? Um, correct. That is, that is correct. Um, uh, what the, what the, um, the information from DEA is, is exactly what you just said is that, um, firemen can't, uh, policemen can't, Chemists can't, scientists cannot distinguish between a fake pill and a real pill. Okay, the only way to to uh, to tell if a pill is pay, uh, if a if a pill is fake or not is in a, is in a laboratory and and a very controlled, safe laboratory. Because every time you you use a mortar, every time you smash up one of these pills, you run the risk of breathing in the fumes and and uh, potentially dying. Okay, um, but there are some things. Um, this is this is a, a fairly new sign. Um, our our signs before this only had some here on up, and I'd like to read some. Sure, some yeah, of the please do. Yeah, DEA put some very good information on this, and uh, what they say is uh, criminal drug networks are mass producing fake pills and falsely marketing them as legitimate prescription pills to to deceive the American public. Okay, and then they go on to say fake pills are easy to purchase, widely available, often contain fentanyl or methamphetamine, and can be deadly. Fake prescription pills are easily accessible and often sold on social media and e-commerce platforms, making them available to anyone with a smartphone. Okay, and that is this, and we all know these kids are carrying everybody today, whether you're, who knows, uh, I don't know what age level, kids start carrying these i'm sure they're very young okay so parents need to make sure that that they they make they have safeguards that the, that their son or their daughter is not ordering prescription medicine on their phone it's very very important okay uh many fake pills are made to look like prescription opioids such as oxycontin um uh, Percocet, Vicodin, Xanax, or stimulants like, like amphetamines uh, or Adderalls, okay? 
And then on the top, they have DA officials report a dramatic rise in the number of fake pills containing at least two milligrams of fentanyl, which is considered a potentially deadly do dose. And they also have drug traffickers are using fake pills to exploit the opioid, opioid crisis and prescription drug use. In 2022, an estimated 110,755 757 people uh, died by drunk poisoning in the United States. And notice, um, DA calls it poisoning, not overdose. The fentanyl, the, the, the synthetic opioid most commonly found in fake pills, is the primary driver in this alarming increase in poisoning deaths. Now, I will, anybody that goes on my website and... What, or, can you give the website? Right, it's called onepillcankillri.com. Anybody that calls me, if you're a health science teacher and you're a parent, uh, if, you're a, uh, uh, if you run a restaurant, uh, whatever it is, okay, if you call me and you want these signs and you're not able to make a donation, please, I will get them over to you ASAP, okay? There are many places we go into uh, and we put these in. We, as, um, we tell them if you can make a donation, fine. If you can't, it's no big deal. We have people that are making donations all the time to cover for, for what you can't do. Okay, so we're, the goal of, of the foundation in my son's name is to save lives. It's not about making money. Uh, or it's, it's about public awareness. Okay, and the more of these signs we get out there and alert the public, the more lives we're going to save. Especially when you look at the number of 110,000, that's like each year, we'll just use the example of Rhode Island, a tenth of Rhode Island passed away every year from situations like this, or the entire city of Warwick. Correct. You know, that is correct. Countrywide, so it's, it's big numbers. Yeah. So let me ask you, you, you know, your son, if you could go back and talk to him as a 13-year-old who's experimenting with drugs or getting into drugs, thinking that it's not going to hurt. It's not going to go any further. It's okay. You know, what would you say to him? I would say that um, uh, smoking uh, marijuana at an early age um, is um, is not good for you. Okay, and I think I did say that to him many times. Um, and um, it will affect you the rest of your life. It alters your decision making process. Um, I don't agree with legalized marijuana. Okay, but that's like anything else. Um, it's certainly better to, to buy, if you are going to smoke marijuana, it's certainly better to buy your marijuana out of a uh, uh, state facility than it is to getting it off the street. Because as you know, like you said earlier, just about everything on the street is a very high percentage of, of the illicit drugs on the street are tainted with fentanyl. And only two milligrams is a tiny, tiny, tiny speck will kill you. So... I would say it's the lesser of two evils, okay? Um, but no, I would have said to him uh, over and over and over again, I love you and I don't want to see you, I want to see you develop and, and that's, that's it, really. So do you feel that a lot of this information that's out there now could have changed the scenario, more publications, more knowledge about what's what could happen things like this that you know dea is trying to get out there do you think things like that with the youth of today who's the 13 or 16 or or 20 year old is can make a change um scott i'm 64 years old um uh, i'm only going to be on this earth for another uh 20 years hopefully 20 years 30 years I want to leave this earth knowing that I saved lives and I prevented other parents from going through what I went through and his, and his mom went through. Um, that is the goal. So, uh, and I feel, and many people feel public awareness is this is only one part, one spoke in the wheel of this major drug crisis that we're in. There's, there's, there's mental, there's, um, Many of these kids have a mental health, there's me mental health issues, there's, uh, um, um, there's, there's all kinds of things. I mean, there isn't any one side, there isn't any one magic bullet 
that's going to fix this problem. But this, again, this is one spoke in the wheel, public awareness, that parents need to talk to their children. How dangerous illicit drugs have become on the street, okay? And, and parents need to, to, to say to their, to their teenager or, or their 35-year-old or their 25 year old or their 25 year olds times have changed. Okay, you're, you're, it's just because you have a bad day or the girlfriend leaves you or, or you're just because your parents um, um, might yell at you or a tough love or whatever, they still love you and they don't want to see you die of, 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 of an overdose. I mean, they don't want to see you go back to drugs uh, um, and, and potentially kill yourself. Okay, so... Um, again, things are not what they used to be 10, 20 years ago. I mean, there's, there's more fentanyl out of the street, and it's more deadlier than ever. Okay, so, so the kids need to know that they have parents that love them, and, and, and they don't want to see them die. Okay. So one of the things your foundation does, it does a lot of great knowledge, uh, getting awareness out there, but obviously that takes funding. So as a nonprofit, I know you have a well, funding coming up. If you could talk a little bit about that. Yes. Um, we, uh, October 8th is my deceased son's birthday. And um, we, have a, um, we have a fundraiser in Providence. And I'll read it off to you. Um, it, it, what this says is you are cordially invited to attend an Italian-style buffet fundraiser in memory, memory of Nicholas' birthday in support of the Nicholas Fentanyl Awareness Foundation. It's Tuesday, October 8th, 2024, from 6 to 10 p.m. It's on, it's on the Bodega on Smith, okay, 373 Smith Street, Providence, Rhode Island, 02908. There's a suggested donation of $85. Um, it, it, goes, it goes anywhere from 85 to 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 what, no, there's no limit. Now, if you want to attend and you cannot, and now we're also going to have a, a complete in, um, um, education, uh, um, an hour or two hours or whatever it takes. And um, uh, we're going to go over the website and we're going to fill people in on, on, on this whole fentanyl thing and drug crisis, etc. Okay. So people will have dinner. Or you can be eating your dinner, and we'll be pulling up um, videos and slides and about fentanyl. Um, now, again, if if you cannot afford to go to this, um, please call me at four. I'll give you my cell phone number. It's four zero one two five five one six eight three. Let me know, and we'll find a way for you to get for for you to go um, at a minimal cost just to cover the meal. I think the meal is $25. Um, and, and if that means saving a life, um, I'm all for it. Okay. We, we have people that are, that are willing to make up the difference, um, to, to save lives. Okay. So again, if you're, if you're living in, if you're a, a, a mom, a single mom and you're struggling to pay the rent every month so, or to buy groceries or to buy clothes for the kids, and you have three or four kids, and you've heard about your your neighbor's son or daughter or a niece or nephew that died from fentanyl, and you want to learn about this to protect your own children, and you can't afford to go, please call me. We will get you in so that you can get up to speed on this. We'll get you the signs so that you can read these signs to your kids, okay? Or Or you can bring your smartphone and take a picture and go over this because it's very important that, that you, you read all the information for your kids or school children. And, um, uh, because they couldn't be approached when they walk out of school. Hey, I got some, I got some real pills that I'm going to sell you. Okay. I have some real Oxycontin pills. Trust me, they're real. Okay. And that, and as we know, one pill can kill. Okay. I think it's amazing what you do with the foundation and trying to bring awareness. Um, let me just ask if your son was here today. What would he say? Uh, that's a hard, that's a tough question. I would say, uh, 
um, you mean if he was alive? If he just was here today, seeing what you're doing, knowing what happened. Well, I think I, I wake up and I, I think he is here today. I think he's here. We're here with us in spirit, and mm -hmm. um, he's what drives me on. He's what motivates me to continue on with this foundation. So, um, um, I think you'd be proud of everything you're doing. Well, thank you, and and I want to thank you for your help, and I, and I couldn't do it without your your support. And Deanna's and your organization has been tremendous. So um, let's hope for, hope that we can save lives. Again, one pill can kill. Ri. Right. com. Yes, well, one one pill can kill ri. dot com. Okay. Um, take a look there. Um, take a look. We'll have some information on the fundraiser. Even if it's something you can't attend, you want us to send a donation as well. These folks will will put things like this out there to try to educate the kids uh, and get the knowledge out there. To me, knowledge is power. If you could stop one kid from getting involved or take one kid out of the loop of being involved, it's it's a life we can save and that life could turn into so many amazing things. Right, right. These kids these kids need to know that these drug dealers are predators and they prey on the weak, they prey on the mentally ill, they prey on kids that come from broken families. And they don't care. As long as they make that sale, they don't care whether you live or die. Right. And they will tell you anything to, 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 to get you to buy their, their, their pills that they're peddling on the street. And if, if anyone thought that's not the case, I would just ask you, selling a pill to someone, knowing there's enough of a drug in there to kill them, is basically killing off your customer. And if a drug dealer doesn't care about that fact then obviously, truthfully, they don't care about that fact. It's making the money today because that customer is pretty much not going to be there tomorrow because they're going to pass away. Well, it, it's funny you said that, Scott, because I've listened to DEA agents and, and uh, very famous news reporters have asked the DEA agent about uh, why doesn't the drunk dealer or the, cart the Mexican cartels or the... Uh, care about killing off their customers and the DEA agent responded it doesn't affect their bottom line there's always another there's always another um there's always another person that they can take advantage of yeah okay and they don't they have no moral 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 conscience okay mm -hmm. I couldn't do it you couldn't do it but it's all about the money yeah so all right all right, all right. So thank, thank you. you very much